What's up guys, I'm Morley from Yelron Blog and today I'm going to show you how I made this man purse from scrap leather and an old fire hose. Before I started cutting any leather, I made a wooden template for the repeating diamond shapes. I started by ripping a piece of scrap cedar to width on the table saw. I just chose this width by eye based on the size of the purse I had in my head. I then set the miter saw to 60 degrees and cut a bunch of equilateral triangles from the strip. Gluing these triangles together gave me diamonds with 60 degree and 120 degree interior angles. I would just call these equilateral diamonds, but the point is, you can use this shape to make a repeating pattern. After the glue dried, I chose the most uniform diamond of the bunch to use for my template. The leather for this project came from a couple grab bags of pretty nice scrap leather I bought at Tandy a while back. I chose three basic colors to get a repeating pattern and then just started cutting. A nice fresh rotary cutter blade made this process a breeze. Once I had enough pieces to cover the size of purse I was envisioning, I could start thinking about the backing. I ended up using an old piece of fire hose. We had a bunch of these scraps at the shop, and it's pretty darn strong. By chance, it was kind of the perfect width for my man purse when cut the long way. I used a heat gun and some weights to try and remove that big crease from the fire hose. Fire hose is made of a rubberized fabric with the rubber side in. I decided to use the rubber side on the outside of the purse since I figured it would give the contact cement a better bonding surface than the fabric side. Those black sharpie marks you see are where I'll later fold the strip of leather covered fire hose to form the purse. I left small, uniform gaps between the leather pieces so that I could hide any small inconsistencies in placement and hide little variations in the shape of the diamonds. For the purse closure, I decided to use rare earth magnets. I attached these between the fire hose and leather pieces to get a sort of hidden closure. To further cover the magnet, I used a big nut to trace a hexagon shape on another piece of scrap leather. In hindsight, I probably should have aligned the magnets to the center gap of each hexagon so that that bulge was a bit less awkward. It was actually a happy coincidence that the piece of fire hose was almost exactly the width of four leather diamonds. But next time, I would probably try to plan for this when sizing the leather pieces. With all the leather pieces glued down, I punched stitching holes to further secure the stop sign covers for the magnets. I had a lot of fun making up the stitching pattern for these little stop signs. I think they turned out pretty cool. With the stop signs reinforced, I trimmed the edges of the purse flush. I 
I quickly realized that contact cement alone would not be enough to hold the diamonds on the fire hose backing, especially when the piece was bent. So, I decided to stitch between every single leather diamond. This was definitely a bit of a tedious process, and it started with punching a ton of stitching holes. This also gave me an opportunity to punch all of the edge holes that would be used to close up the purse. I trim the ends of the strip in such a way that when the purse is closed, the pattern actually lines up from top to bottom. Since fire hose is really a fabric, cutting it leaves you with a frayed edge. To try and manage this, I coated all of the edges in E6000 and then sliced off any hanging threads. Next came the long process of sewing between all of the leather diamonds. I started by hemming the top and bottom of the bag. I played around with some ideas and settled on this kind of ladder stitching pattern. One of the nice things about this part of the project was I could really do it anywhere, not just in the shop. I had to do the stitching in a bunch of short stretches, so each time I started and ended a stitch, I doubled it up and tucked the loose end on the inside of the purse. This left me with a lot of little thread tails, which I trimmed flush. I also dabbed a bit of E6000 on each thread end so that it wouldn't come loose over time. When I tested out the magnetic closure, it was obvious that just two little magnets separated by all that material weren't strong enough to hold the bag closed. So I added another magnet to the inside of the bag for each closure. I used some black scrap leather and brass D-rings to make the tabs that would go between the purse and the strap. I really like the look of the jet black leather with brass hardware, so I carried this color combo over to the strap itself. Finally, I could turn this fancy looking strip into a closed bag. I matched up the pattern between the front and back and then got to stitching. I chose to wrap the stitch around the edge since the cut edge of the fire hose is a bit ragged. I figured this would hold any stray threads in a little better than just leaving the cut edge exposed. When I got close to the opening of the purse, I stitch the front and back separately about an inch below the opening. This just makes it easier to get things into and out of the purse. This time, I use the heat gun to put a bend into the purse, 
rather than take one out. This helped a lot in holding the purse closed, but the heat actually caused a few stitches to melt and snap. However, redoing these stitches was pretty straightforward. With the purse body all done, I got started on the straps. I cut some long pieces of veg tan leather, wet the pieces, and dyed them coal black. I really enjoy using black leather dye because it tends to come out super uniform. After the dye had dried for a day, I oiled the pieces with Neatsfoot oil. To make the strap a bit more comfortable, I coated the raw side of the leather with gum tragacanth and rubbed this in with my wooden edge burnisher. This presses the raw leather fibers together and gives you a pretty smooth surface. For the buckle, I cannibalized an old belt of mine that was pretty much falling apart. To attach the buckle to the strap, I punched a bunch of holes in a line and then filed this rough opening to get a nice clean slot. This is kind of my standard technique to make a slot in leather, and it always seems to give a surprisingly clean result. Next, I trimmed the end of this strap so that I could attach a brass clip. I used a skiving knife to take off some thickness of the strap where it bends around the buckle and around the clip. With the buckle half of the strap done, I moved on to the other half of the strap. I cut a small strip of leather to make the little loop that goes next to the buckle. I'm sure there's a technical term for this little loop, I just have no idea what it is. I used a scrap piece of veg tan leather to make a little maker's mark badge to put on the strap. With each of these pieces at their final size, I was ready to finish each one with a coat of resiline. Once the little maker's mark patch was all sealed, I could apply antiquing without drastically changing the color of the uncarved leather. I put a second coat of resiline on each piece and, most importantly, two coats over the antiquing to prevent the pigment from wiping off. After that, I could move on to finishing the edges of the straps.
I burnished the edges first with water and then with a coat of beeswax. I attached the clips to the straps with contact cement and reinforced these joints with a cross stitch. I also used a cross stitch to close up the strap loop. With that little loop done, the strap was ready for final assembly. The last thing to do was attach my maker's mark. I think this project epitomizes how I personally love to make stuff, going in with a rough thing in my head and then just seeing where the twists and turns take me. When I started this project, the purse was supposed to be a single piece of leather, but I quickly realized I didn't have enough large pieces. But frankly, I think using a bunch of scraps defines this project more than it being a man purse. I really enjoyed wearing this around the city and it's the perfect size to hold my wallet. Thanks for watching and be sure to check out the rest of my channel. I have a whole bunch of other videos about making anything and everything.